Good morning. Happy Father's Day to those of you who are fathers. Let's stand and worship the Lord together. We're going to start with Scripture, Psalm 108, verses 8 through 14. This morning we'll be thinking through all of the different ways in which the Lord is fatherly in His attributes and in His love towards us. Psalm 103, verses 8 through 14 says, The Lord is compassionate and merciful, slow to get angry and filled with unfailing love. He will not constantly accuse us nor remain angry forever. He does not punish us for all our sins. He does not deal harshly with us as we deserve. For his unfailing love toward those who fear him is as great as the height of the heavens above the earth. How far is that? Not measurable in miles, is it? He has removed our sins as far from us as the east is from the west. The Lord is like a father to his children, tender and compassionate to those who fear him, for he knows how weak we are. He remembers we are only dust. How incredible that we get to call the King of Heaven not only our Lord, not only our Savior, not only our friend, but also our Father. Who else invites me to call him Father is a line in this next song that we're going to sing called Only a Holy God. Who else commands all the host of heaven? Who else could make every king bow down? Who else can whisper and darkness trembles? Only a holy God. What other beauty demands such what other splendor outshines the sun? What other majesty rules with justice? Only a holy God. Come and behold Him, the Holy, forever a holy 
Amen. Wish a happy Father's Day to all the fathers you find around you while we play that again. Find your way back to your seats if you would, please. Remain standing. <clears throat> Nothing in my life has made me feel less equipped, less capable, less competent than becoming a father. And when I got married, that was one thing. It's like, okay, I'm now responsible for another human being, but she's really self-sufficient, capable, competent, amazing, awesome, etc., etc. <clears throat> but when I became a father, that, that, that other people depending on me thing became very, very real. But another thing that became real was God's love for me. I felt something for this newborn infant that I'd never felt towards another human being, and I realized my father feels that way towards me, and this song captures that sentiment very well. He is a good father to us, and, and he loves us like that feeling I just described, and we can rest in that confidence. I heard a thousand stories of what they think you're like, but I you tell me that you're pleased and that I'm never alone. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. And I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. for answers far and wide but I know we're all searching for answers only you provide cause you know just what we need before we say a word you're a good good father it's who you are, it's who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all. You are perfect in all of your ways. 
assurance in that truth. You can be seated. What a joy it is to gather together as God's children, acknowledging him as our father, recognizing him as the perfect example of any father we could ever conceive of, and knowing that he enables us and empowers us as dads. Uh, to have that awesome responsibility of fathering our children as well. He has everything that we need. Happy Father's Day to those of you who are fathers here among us. I'm without my family today, which is not ideal, but I'm grateful that they have the opportunity uh, to be back up in Pennsylvania, uh, being able to spend some time with friends, but also at summer camp. There's a couple of Christian summer camps that they're a part of. Evan and Ryan, this is they leave today for their first week of overnight camp. So this whole week, they'll be away from mommy and daddy for the first time ever, which is a big uh, prayer for them. Uh, Claire's at a day camp with Child Evangelism Fellowship. And Elena has an awesome privilege of going to a missionary training camp with Child Evangelism Fellowship. And so it's, it's wonderful that they have those opportunities. You can pray for them, that God will work in their lives this week. If you are a guest with us and we haven't had the opportunity to make a connection with you, um, we would love to do that. The ushers are coming down and they have some cards that they would like to hand to you. Just notify them that you would like one of those cards and the information about the church and you can fill that out and put it in the offering plate in the foyer there. That's very helpful for us. Um, here at Abingdon Bible Church, we have a, a process for making disciples that we like to keep simple and uh, we talk about the the need we have to know Christ and then grow in our relationship with Christ, go serve as Christ and sow the gospel of Christ. I'm going to highlight a couple of opportunities to go serve as Christ. Uh, one of them is in the bulletin here about school supplies uh, through Faith in Action and making sure that they're delivered by the church by June 27th. That's very, very helpful as we partner with Faith in Action and Abingdon Baptist Church to provide bags of school supplies for elementary school children. Um, also with Faith in Action, we have food pantry um, opportunity. Our church is assigned to provide volunteers June 27 to July 1. During the school year, it's limited for children to be involved in that because they're at school during the day. Uh, but this is an opportunity for parents or grandparents to invite a child to come with you and Help them experience the blessing there is in serving others and being the hands and feet of Jesus in that way, especially when it comes to serving those that are in need in our community. And I encourage you to take advantage of that opportunity. I'd like to invite our Family Discipleship Director, Scott Graham, up here, and he's going to highlight a few things uh, that are kind of under his scope of responsibility. 
couple things um, in your bulletin, three altogether. Um, but last week, VBS, uh, volunteer signups, we'd asked that if you were interested to be, have that turned in last week. Um, and looking through the registrations for, for help, um, I could use some more help. So it's better to have more help than not enough, I guess, right? So um, this week, if that's something that you wanna do, um, maybe you don't wanna do it, but maybe it's like something you feel like I should do, um, and step outside of a, an area of comfort, um, I would encourage you to do that this week. Uh, there are forms still back on the foyer table. You can grab one of those. You can slide under my office door right over here or set it on the um, desk in the office. Uh, secondly, on the back of your bulletin, you'll notice um, ABC Student Ministry, grades 6 through 12, and Young Adult Ministry. Um, we had a function this Wednesday night, and it occurred to me, um, I, I recognize that we communicate here largely through Remind. And Remind is, is an app that uh, we're able to message people. And because it's new for me, I just thought I would add all the people in there and people would just get the messages. Well, some people got them and some people didn't, which I felt bad about because not everybody heard about it. So um, I wasn't quite sure what the problem was there, but um, I gave you some instructions on the bottom under apologies. If you want to take a minute and read that, um, you ought to be able to get signed into that. If you have any trouble with that, just let me know. And also right above that on the 25th, um, well, actually this Wednesday, young adults and student ministry together, Wednesday night, 630, um, down in the gym, we'll have um, some food there and, and some fun. We're going to have a little bit of a game night and also going to give you an idea of what's coming the rest of the summer for both of those ministries combined and separately. So I encourage you to come to that. And then, of course, the next Saturday, um, we're going to leave the church 730-ish in the morning, probably 730 on the nose is our drop dead time to get out of here to go to Knoxville. We're going to go to um, the main event, and the information is listed there. And then lastly, you've seen the posters, you've seen the inserts. All church um, luncheon next week uh, to honor our graduates. The church is providing chicken, um, and we're just asking uh, you all to bring um, um, a dish to share for that. So following Sunday school, 12 o'clock, down in the gym, um, we hope you all can be there for that. Now I'm going to ask Josiah McCraw to come now and to pray. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Dear Lord, I thank you for this day, and we also thank you for all the fathers around the world who work hard, provide, and love their families. We are thankful for them, Lord. We are also thankful that we can call you Abba Father. Um, give us a sweet time of fellowship as we celebrate our fathers and worship you today. We pray for our fathers who are not walking with you. We pray for the salvation for them and that they will come to know the truth so that they can lead their families by truth. Help, help us keep our eyes on you, Lord, during these busy times. Give us not only the willingness, but the desire to learn um, about your word and grow in you. Prepare our hearts as Pastor Jason preaches from your word this morning. I pray for those who are battling with sickness and pain. Heal them in the ways they need it. Forgive, forgive us for our selfish and unkind hearts. Um, as sons and daughters of you, guide us to grow to be more like you. We thank you for being so loving, caring, and gracious towards us. We also give you thanks for sending your, done, your son to die on the cross for our sins. Um, give us safe travels as we head home this morning, and um, I pray all these things in your name. Amen. Thanks, Josiah. You can remain seated for our next song. I'm going to have the worship team sing through verse 1 in the chorus to teach you one that we did maybe just a few times way back and then dropped it, but we're going to bring it back. Um, it's called Blessed Assurance. It speaks to our confidence in Christ. Uh, application to Father's Day. Uh, any fathers here father perfectly? Never made a mistake? No regrets? 
Not me. I mess up all the time, right, Levi? <laughs> I mess up all the time. And so my vertical relationship with my Heavenly Father, where I find forgiveness for my stakes, is critical to my horizontal father re fatherly relationship with my sons. And that's where this comes in. So listen to verse 1 in the chorus, and then I'll motion for you to stand, and you can join us back at the beginning at verse 1 again, and we'll sing it all together. Attempts to be satisfied were vain and empty until the moment you rescued me and your love filled me. My soul sings now. My start at the beginning. All my attempts to be satisfied were vain and empty until the moment you rescued me and your
turn on my microphone. There are certain things that characterize men especially, and one of them, I believe, is their infatuation with power. What is it that fascinates men about power so much? This definitely starts at an early age. My sons have just an amazing fascination with dinosaurs, and they have had that for three years now and continue to try to get new books from the library. They are just so fascinated with dinosaurs. 
And I think one of the aspects of dinosaurs that makes them so fascinating is how powerful they are. My sons can quote to you how much strength there is in their jaws and how it compares to other animals and all those kinds of things. Dinosaurs just have the power to destroy anything that comes up against them. And uh, so dinosaurs is one thing men are into that character, have an aspect of power. Another thing is engines. Whether it's on tractors or cars or boats or planes or rocket ships or trains, men just seem to love engines because of their power. What about tools? You remember Home Improvement, that show in the 90s with Tim Allen and the Binford Tool Show? Arr, 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 you know? He loved all that power. Powerful, right? Yes, so men just seem to have this awesome infatuation with powerful things. And those powerful things can often be very, very useful when it comes to getting stuff done. That's another thing we men like is to get stuff done, use powerful things to get stuff done, whether it's in, around the house or in the garage or in our workplaces or in the yard. But one of the places that we need the most power it's when it comes to our role that God has given us as fathers. We need God's power for us to be able to be good fa fathers. And the good thing is, God never calls us to do anything in our roles as fathers that he doesn't also supply the power for us that's needed to do that. The problem is, sometimes dads can be better at utilizing the power available to us through power tools and things like that than we are utilizing the power that God gives us to be good dads through things like his word and the Holy Spirit. The reality is, God has given us dads everything we need to fulfill the responsibilities that he's called us to do as dads. We can be great dads, but we need to receive the power that God is offering us. And we're going to talk about that today. Well, I've got some power tools at home, likely not nearly as many as some of the men in this room. One power tool that I especially appreciate is my table saw. You've been wondering what's under the wrap today. It's my table saw. Julie's dad gave me this table saw as a present years ago, and I use it when doing various projects. And this table saw has a lot of parts that I think can serve as good reminders or illustrations for us of two things. Responsibilities that God has given to us as fathers, and the power that God has given to us to carry out those responsibilities. Now, we'll primarily be addressing fathers in this message today, but many of these principles are equally applicable to men in general or anyone who really has responsibility to provide for and to care for others. So what I'd like to do is examine a few parts of this table saw one at a time and show how they can help us remember biblical principles that are important for us dads. As we begin, I'd like you to turn in your Bibles to Ephesians chapter 5. We'll get to that in a moment. We'll be in verse 23 to begin with. So go ahead and turn there. And as you're doing that, I want to point out one of the most important aspects or parts of this table saw. And that, of course, is the blade. Without the blade, the saw is useless. It cannot carry out the purpose for which it was designed. The blade is how it is able to do what it was designed to do, cut long strips of wood or other building materials. Now, I've used this blade for trimming vinyl flooring to put in our downstairs bathroom. 
My father-in-law uses a table saw similar to this to make furniture, like the bunk beds he's made for my kids. The purpose of the blade is to help someone build something. And that's the purpose of dads as well. God has called us, with his help, to build something. Not necessarily furniture, but to build strong families. God is a God of order, and there's order in everything uh, that he does. There's order in who he is. And in Ephesians 5, the Apostle Paul sets forth a very clear understanding that God has determined order in the family as well. Look at verse 23. It says, For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, his body, and is himself its Savior. Now, we could spend a whole sermon just examining what it means to be the head of a family, that Christ is head of the church. But I'd like to just narrow in on the aspects of what this headship means, is that God has given men a place of responsibility and authority in our families. And we find the way that this responsibility and authority is to be carried out just a couple verses down. This is to be carried out through sacrificial love. And Christ himself is the model of that. Take a look at verse 25. Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. We are to be like Christ in that we love our wives to the extent that we are selfless and give ourselves up for them as Christ has given himself up for the church. That is a pretty tall order, isn't it? Do you think we might need a little help when it comes to carrying this out? Perhaps we need a little power outside of ourselves to rely on to do this? You can shake your heads, husbands. Yes, we do. Let's hold on to that thought. We'll get to that a little later. So the blade on the saw helps us remember that the purpose of the saw is to help build things, and our purpose as dads is to build strong families. Now, I've got another part that I haven't attached to the saw yet. Anybody know what this is called? Anybody know what this is called? Shout it out. A fence? Yes, okay, so it's called a rip fence. That's what I know it as. And the purpose of this rip fence is to attach it to the saw and you take a piece of wood and you bring it along the blade and you slide the wood right along this fence here. It serves as a guide so that the material you're using ends up nice and straight. Well, the responsibility of fathers that the Bible talks about most is that we are to guide our children. We are to teach our children. Guide them in the ways of the Lord. So that just as a piece of wood against this rib fence ends up nice and straight, by God's grace and with his help, our children's lives end up in alignment with the straight and narrow way of God. If you would go ahead, please, and turn in your Bibles to Deuteronomy chapter 6. We'll be there next. Deuteronomy chapter 6. The Ten Commandments are listed two different places in Scripture. The one that seems to be the the most commonly known is Exodus 20. Uh, The other place is Deuteronomy chapter 5. And just after these Ten Commandments are listed, Moses tells us why these commands are so important. 
Look at verses 1 through 3 here of Deuteronomy 6. He says, Now this commandment, the statutes and the rules, that the Lord your God commanded me to teach you, that you may do them in the land to which you are going over to possess it, that you may fear the Lord your God, you and your son and your son's son, by keeping his statutes and his commandments, which I command you all the days of your life, and that your days may be long. Hear, therefore, O Israel, and be careful to do them, that it may go well with you, and that you may multiply greatly as the Lord, the God of your fathers, has promised you in a land flowing with milk and honey. Notice that it is for the good of his people that God is clear about what he expects from them. God loves his people. He created them. He knows what is best for them. He wants to provide what is best for them. But in order to do that and to not have to discipline them, they need to obey. In the same way, we fathers love our kids. And if we are Christ followers ourselves, we know that following the Lord is best for them. So we need to take responsibility for teaching them God's commands. Moses tells us that this is our responsibility, specifically dads. Um, No... Mothers certainly have a very important role when it comes to teaching their children to love God. But when you look at the context here, especially back in verse 2, God says, you and your son and your son's son. So the primary recipients of these words are to be fathers. It's directed at fathers to have this as their responsibility. And verses 4 to 9 make clear that we're not only to just correct wrong behavior, as we read those, notice that the primary concern here is actually the heart. Let's take a look at verses 4 to 9. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. And these words that I command you today shall be on your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way and when you lie down and when you rise. You shall bind them as a sign on your hand and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. You shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. Verse 5, the law is summarized by loving God with all our heart and soul and might. And in verse 6, we see that our commands are to be first on our hearts. Moses is talking to us parents here, fathers specifically. God must be number one in our hearts First, and then we are to teach these things diligently to our children. And how are we to go about doing that? Notice that God doesn't say that we are to, to line our kids up in straight rows and lecture them for hours, making them sit still. No, that's not the method that's talked about here. The method is that we are spending time with our kids while sitting at home, while walking along the road, when they go to bed at night, when they get up in the morning. It's assumed that fathers have a lot of shoulder-to-shoulder time with our kids. And it's in that context in which we have just do life together that what is in our hearts, love for God, then gets passed on to their hearts. Now, we do that by example that we give, for sure, but we also need to maximize the impact of teachable moments. These are the things that come up 
when you're shoulder to shoulder with kids doing life with them, where you have to be, okay, I don't want to pass it by. The thing that I'm doing, the task that I want to get done with my kid's help is secondary. I need to pause and take advantage of this time to teach my kids, whether it's explaining why their behavior is not acceptable. That they cannot disrespect that other person because God created them and God loves them. When a child asks questions, we need to pause and address them, take full advantage of the opportunity. I remember one time several years ago, our daughter Elena was in this musical, Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat, and it's the telling of the story of Joseph from the Bible. And as we're going back and forth to performances with her, she said, Daddy, why was it that Potiphar's wife wanted to be with Joseph in that way? She didn't want to have kids with Joseph. She's already married. So we had an opportunity that even at a young age to talk about the desires that men and women have for one another and how sometimes they're wrong and that Potiphar's wife had wrong desires and that she should not have acted on them. And when she did act on them, they had dire consequences for Joseph. So we teach them as, they, as we go along our day. Now, it presupposes we have a lot of time with them. And I know it's not possible for all of us to do that. Work schedules and other things like that make it especially difficult. But as much as it is possible, we need to spend time with our kids. And that likely means saying no to other things that could fill up our time. Sometimes people ask me, well, what kind of hobbies do you enjoy? Well, there are things that I enjoy doing, but my priority at this stage in life is when I'm not doing some church-related ministry, I'm spending time with my kids. So really, my hobby is spending time with my kids right now. And I'm blessed that the things that I like to do are also things that they like to do. And, and so it is enjoyable for me, and it is relaxing to me to, to go to a park or go biking or hiking or kayaking to do these kinds of things. Now, we've got many grandfathers here also, and I urge you, as much as it is possible, make that effort to spend time with your grandchildren. It's remarkable the impact you can have on their lives when you take those day-to-day -day opportunities to be like this rib fence that they know the guide that they are to line themselves up with, loving God, loving others. You show that by who you are and taking those teachable moments with them. Now, this is especially important in today's society because they're not getting these kinds of moral guidance from anybody else in society outside of the church and parents, perhaps. Many children just are bombarded with the influences of the world, and they are certainly not the ways of the Lord. Now, the next part of the fence of the um, table saw that I want to point out to you is actually the blade guard. Now, I had removed it because I wanted you to see the blade very well. But when it's in position, this guard actually is a piece of plastic over the blade, and it has a very specific purpose there. It helps people from getting hurt that are using this table saw. And so this particular piece of the saw reminds us dads that an aspect of our role as fathers is to definitely be protectors. And one of the ways that we do that is to establish appropriate boundaries. Like this gives us a boundary where you do not want to put your hand when you're using the saw. Physical boundaries are good, especially for children when they're very little. We have to make sure that they don't run out onto the street. We have to ensure that our homes are secure at night when our children are sleeping. But in addition to those physical boundaries, we need to establish boundaries of what we allow to influence our children. I probably don't even need to mention how opposed to the ways of the Lord our culture is right now. And it grieves me when I see children that are being exposed at far too young of ages to these worldly influences. A number of years ago, 
I remember our daughters, Elena and Clara, uh, were invited to a neighbor's girl's birthday party. And this neighbor girl was turning seven years old. The theme that was chosen for her birthday party was this music group, One Dimension. Now, One Dimension isn't one of those music groups that uses profanity or explicit lyrics, but at seven years old, is it really wise to promote that romantic love is the be-all and end-all of everything in life, like these boy bands do? No. Her mom and dad should not have themed their seven-year-old birthday party around a boy band. And so I really commend my wife that when it comes to guarding our kids against these worldly influences, she's very, very intentional about that. We off, most often lift, listen to Christian music as a family, but there's some other fun music out there that have positive lyrics that don't talk about romantic love, and so my wife has been intentional about putting those together in compilations and listening to those because we know that music is powerful as a tool, and what kids listen to, they like to listen to the same songs over and over again, and so we monitor what our kids are exposed to very closely. In our house, the TV is only on for limited amounts of time and only for a specific show. It's not just on in the background where they can be exposed to anything that happens to be on. And our children know the shows that they're permitted to watch. And if they have a new show they want to watch, they ask us before it. We'll watch a little bit of it with them. If it's not appropriate, we'll tell them that they're not allowed to watch that show. There's a, a verse of scripture that is very good for all of us parents to memorize and to teach to our children that helps us discern what is something that is okay to be exposed to as not just children but believers in general and what are some things that we should just leave aside and it's Philippians chapter 4 verse 8 when you're thinking about something that is whether or not it's okay to let your kids be exposed to this, teach them this, and use this as a grid to filter it through. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Before we expose our kids to something, we need to have them Think through this and compare whatever it is to the characteristics that we find in this verse. Well, we parents should be especially vigilant on behalf of our kids who don't know discernment yet, especially younger ones. They don't know what's good for them yet. And because kids can figure out how to use technology, a lot of times easier, more quickly than we parents do, we must be very vigilant to monitor what they see on computers and tablets and smartphones. And there are some good options out there for monitoring what your children are exposing them to and watching. Um, some software you can install on your devices, things like that. So I, ensure, I urge you to ensure that you have those kinds of measures set up. Dads, let's do the hard work of protecting our kids, which in this day and age has a lot to do with monitoring what they're exposed to at an early age. Well, a useful feature of this table saw is something else. I'm going to remove this blade guard for a moment so you can actually see this. This particular table saw has a feature in which you can raise the blade up and down. So you can raise it to a higher level if you have a thicker piece of wood or a lower level. Let's say that you have a thick piece of wood and you want uh, to cut only a notch out of it that's less, then you, you lower the blade down a little bit. So that's a very helpful feature to adjust. The elevation wheel is what it's called. What this part of the table saw reminds me of is that as dads, we need to take every opportunity to elevate our children, to encourage them. 
to build them up. We'll live in a day and age of fierce competition among kids, and in a time when many kids question their own value, their own worth, and when kids don't feel good about who they are, and especially don't have that vital connection with Christ and understand their identity with Him, then what happens is that they try to put others down to make themselves feel better. And that was happening in my day, it's happening today, but now people are on social media, and so they put others down in public, on social media, in front of everybody to see. We need to assume that our kids are going to be battered down occasionally, at least by their peers. And so we need to build up and encourage our children, not with empty words or flattery, not overdoing it so that they become prideful or self-centered, but expressing a combination of unconditional love and praise for a job well done when it's deserved. This is expressed by the writer of the Hebrews when he says, and let us consider how to stir one another up to love and good works. The goal in this verse is for one, the one being encouraged to end up loving others actively through their deeds, to love and to good works. So we make it a point to give lots of praise to our kids when they're putting others before themselves. If we can raise selfless kids in a world where the vast majority of people are self-centered, that will give our kids a powerful testimony of who Christ is, the most selfless one who has ever lived. And notice this verse says that we are to consider, consider how to stir one another up to love and good works. We need to know our children well enough to know what motivates them as a unique individual, whether it be words of affirmation or notes or hugs or affection or little gifts or privileges, things like that. Now, we have not cut a single board here this morning, and yet this ta- saw has been a helpful tool for us. We've seen that the blade reminds us that the most important job we have as fathers is to build strong families by the grace of God and with his help. We've seen that the ripped fence reminds us that we are to go about having time with our kids, teaching them the principles of scripture, When we have that time, love God first, spend time with them, maximize those teachable moments. The blade guard reminds us that our role as fathers is to protect and establish boundaries for our kids, to ensure they're not exposed overly to the world's influence. The elevation wheel helps us remember that we are to build our children up, especially when we see them acting in selfless ways. So the bulk of this message is really focused on the responsibilities that we have as fathers, that we've been given by God. In a way, I do hope that us dads are feeling the weight of those responsibilities right now. Because we do each need to come to a point that we realize these are far too difficult for us to handle on our own. But there is one part of the table saw that we haven't mentioned yet. Probably gets overlooked often, but it's very, very important. And when we examine this, it also points to the most important aspect of our role as fathers. Because as important as all of these other aspects of this tool are, as important as the things that are listed on the screen there that help us, to understand our role as fathers, any of these are worthless, except if we don't have the one thing I'm looking for here. Let's think in terms of the table saw. What does it need in order to make anything, any other part of it worth something? What does it need? Power, very good. It needs the power cord. Without the power cord, this table saw can do nothing of what it's designed to do. And in the same way, if we as dads are not plugged into our power source, it is impossible for us to be the dads 
that God wants us to be. Think about this. In most situations, what you're going to plug something into already has electricity flowing to those outlets. You don't have to turn on the electricity. It's already ready there for somebody to plug it in. All you need to do is actually plug in what you have as your tool and turn it on, right? In the same way, Jesus has made it clear that we can do nothing as Christ followers, especially nothing as challenging as fathering our kids without being plugged into him as the power source. Now, obviously, back in Jesus' day, there wasn't power tools. There wasn't electricity that was coming through wires that you had to plug things into. But there were grapevines, and Jesus used that analogy instead. But if you think about it, it's really the same thing. Jesus said, I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. Apart from Jesus, we can be okay, fathers. Apart from Jesus, we can, we can be satisfactory, fathers. No. Apart from Jesus, we can do nothing that has eternal value as fathers. But the good news is that with Christ, we are able to do more than we think. In fact, Paul wrote in Ephesians 3.20 that God is able to do far more abundantly than all we ask for or think according to the power at work within us. Just as in most circumstances, an electrical outlet has the power running to it, a healthy vine healthy grapevine, has life running through it, all a branch has to do to bear fruit is to abide in the vine. And we dads need to plug into Jesus, our power source, in order to be good dads. He is always ready to give us that power that we need. We simply need to connect with him. Now, it could be that you are here and you've never connected to God through Jesus. You don't know what it means to be a vine that is in the branch of Christ. You don't know what it means to receive God's power for your parenting. And if that's the case, know that it all begins with believing that Jesus made the ultimate sacrifice for you by dying for you and for rising again so that you could become a son of, of God through faith in him. If you'd like to know more about this, Jeffrey Johnson, one of our elders, is going to be up here after the service, and I urge you to come and take the opportunity to talk with him about what that means. Now, it could be that you are here, and you uh, have God as your Heavenly Father. You're assured of that, but you know that when it comes to being plugged into the power that Jesus provides for you, in your Christian walk, especially in your role as dad, that you really aren't plugged in as well as you should be for the benefit of your children, your grandchildren. Plugging into Jesus as your power source always requires being intentional about that. Jesus often made the effort to leave the crowds that were pressing in upon him because he knew how essential it was for him to go off and spend time with his heavenly father. If Jesus, the son of God, found that to be a necessity, we need to make that same effort. Be intentional about drawing close to Jesus, whether it be in worship or in prayer or in scripture reading or in spending time with other Christians who can encourage you and edify you and build you up. When you plug into Jesus as your power source, dads, he will give you all that you need to fulfill the responsibilities he set before you today that we've talked about. If there's any way that I can help you understand this or help you understand what it means to plug into Jesus and, and have that closeness of a relationship with him, that you're receiving the Father's love, you're able to then pass it on to others, 
I encourage you to come to me, come to a, a strong Christian friend, talk with them about how you yourself can make that, be intentional with that, about spending time and, and plugging in to Jesus as your power source through the word of God, through prayer, through dependence on the Holy Spirit. Let's pray. Father, I, I speak on behalf of myself as well as the other fathers in this room. And I confess that far too often we don't take seriously the responsibilities that you've given us. Um, we, we don't have them in the front of our mind. We don't make them enough of a, of a priority when it comes to parenting our children. And the other thing that we don't do is is rely heavily enough on you to empower us to parent our children well. Um, we, by nature, are rebellious and self-sufficient, and it is wrong. We need humility. We need to understand the gravity and weight of the the responsibilities you've given us as fathers. And that needs to bring us to our knees. Father, I pray for myself and the other dads here today that we would have a, a refreshed understanding of our responsibility as fathers and that you would Bring us to that point of humility, even now. Make us humble. Help us to understand our need for your power within us. Give us the commitment and the dedication to be intentional about our relationship with you that's so easy to let slide by the wayside. Father, we... We need other men in our lives to hold us accountable and to encourage us in these ways. As men, far too often we try to do things on our own when you've given us the gift of the body of Christ. So I pray for each man here that we would walk shoulder to shoulder with other men that are also parenting or have perhaps been a little further along in the journey and they can, they can help us with these things. Break that spirit of independence and make us dependent on you, God. We pray for our wives that we would lead them well. They, they would respond well to our leadership. That they would be a source of encouragement for us as well. That they would be uh, co-parents in their role with teaching and guiding children. Thank you so much for them and the nurturing role they often have. We pray for our children. We know that it is only when you open their hearts that they're able to receive Christ, that they're able to have soft, receptive spirits to the guidance that we're offering. And so go before us and work in their hearts to bring them to that place of repentance and be eager to honor you. Father, we love you. We're grateful that you've given us everything we need. May we take full advantage of that by drawing close to you. We ask in your name. Amen. Amen. It was just on the screen, John 15, 5. Jesus said, apart from me, you can do nothing. Let's stand. What gift of grace is Jesus my Redeemer? There is no more for heaven now to care. He is my joy, my righteousness and freedom, my steadfast love, my deep and boundless peace. To this I hold 
My hope is only Jesus For my life is only bound to His Oh, how strange and divine I can sing All is mine, yet not I But through Christ in me In my need, His power is displayed The night is dark, but I am not forsaken. For by my side, the Savior, He will stay. I labor on in weakness and rejoicing. For in my need, His power is displayed. To this I hold. My shepherd will defend me Through the deepest valley he will lead Oh, the night has been won And I shall overcome Yet not I, but through Christ in me No fate I dread I know I am forgiven No future sure The price it has been paid For Jesus bled And suffered for my pardon And he was raised To overthrow the grave To this I hold My sin has been defeated Jesus now and ever is my plea Oh, the chains are released I can sing, I am free Yet not I, but through Christ in me With every breath I long to follow Jesus For he has said That he will bring me home And day by day I know he will renew me Until I stand With joy before the throne To this I hold My hope is only all the glory evermore to Him. When the race is complete, still my lips shall repeat, yet not I, but through Christ in me. Yet not I, but through Christ in me. Yet not I, but through Christ in me. You can be seated. Scott Graham's going to come with a few words. Okay, one more thing. So, it's Father's Day, right? Uh, Pastor, you mentioned several things in so many terms. Uh, we have the responsibility, the great responsibility to pro be providers, to be protectors. And sometimes we just need to be a pal to our kids, too. But guess what? Sometimes, with all that pressure and responsibility, we need, we need some pals, too. So, today, we're going to help you out with that. So, how's this going to work? Just like we did on Mother's Day. I'm going to have a family uh, member uh, that represents the family. Could be a child, could be a wife. Uh, come up and grab one of these uh, for the men in your life, all adult men. Um, get one of these. If, if there's somebody sitting around you that's not being cared for, um, take it upon yourself to come up and give one of these to them too. So we're going to do that right now. Pastor, would you help me pass these out, please?
you know somebody that's not here today, maybe they're working, uh, maybe they're home sick, not able to get out, um, and you'd like to take it upon yourself to get one of these to give to them, you can do that as well. I'll stay up front.